Hi students, welcome to my channel. Today, I can explain you about the database management system. Uh, actually, in the previous session, we have discussed about the introduction to database management system. In that, we have seen what is the purpose of the database and what is the purpose of the database management system. And then, now we'll going to the historical perspective of the database management system. So let's start our video and if you had done uh, go, gone through the database management system playlist, please go through it. So in the historical perspective, first we'll see about the data. Our data is nothing but a collection of facts and figures. Um, in the previous session, we have discussed that a data is nothing but a program. A program consists of the data which is in the form of uh, relations or in the form of fields or in the form of any related data. So this data is consists of some facts and figures. What are these facts and figures is facts are nothing but some of the rules which we'll use in the database and in the figures in the sense what is the structure that we give about to our data. Then database management system is introduced for the um, doing changes or to make any uh, updations or retrieving our data. This database management system has been introduced. These two points already we had discussed in the previous session. Now we'll go through next other points. In 1960s, that is before 1960s, tree-like data structure was introduced. What is this tree-like data structure is? If you go through with the data structures uh, in your before sense, then it will be quite simple to understand this term. Okay, tree-like data structure is nothing but a parent-child relationship. Suppose there is a parent and then it will have two childs or three childs and then for the other child, there it will have sub -chills. Okay, this can be done by this uh, little small example, Rani. Rani's uh, role number is 1. Rani's age is 12. In this way, we can store a lot chunks of data before 1960s. After 1960s, that is in 1960s, Charles Butchman was the scientist who have done a terrific work on the database management system and introduced a new integrated data storage. And he introduced this integrated data store in the form of network data model. What is this network data model is a parent is connected to a child. A child is connected to another parent. This another parent is connected to child. This is nothing but a network data model. Network data model is nothing but a connection from parent to child or child to parent or parent child to the sub child. Okay. This network on the basis of this network data model, he introduced the integrated data storage. For the for his achievement, for this terrific work, he was awarded with the Turing Award. Turing Award is nothing but a uh, equivalent to Nobel Prize for the in the field of the computer science. Okay. Then we'll go through with uh, 1970. 1970, Mr. Edgar Cott was awarded with the Turing Award in 1981 for his achievement for the development of the relational data model. Relational data model is a very important and very, very, very important concept in the relational data model. So, uh, in this relational data model, as we have uh, discussed our example as well in the previous section about the database, that is a table which will have a roll number, name, age, or something, something related data. And these related data stored in a form of a table. And this table is termed as a relation. And these overall representation is termed as a relational data model. In further classes, we'll see deep about this relational data model. So don't worry about this. And I'll make sure in this video to give our uh, notes. Don't worry about that, okay? In 1980s, IBM 
introduced a structured query language what is a structured query language is it's also a part of the relational data model this structured query language makes some conditions to retrieve or store or manage the data this uh, structured query language we will see further in our further classes don't worry about this as well and why to use this structured query language why not to use this tree like data structure or uh, integrated data storage is when there is a large chunks of data when there is a large data to be stored then it will become quite difficult to store retrieve and access the data so in the situation we use this structured query language as it is simple and quite easy to use as its syntax is quite simple okay then in 1980s new database management system products are also used database management system products are nothing but the products which will be helpful in developing the database management system and making its efficiency more and then we'll have a 1990s object oriented database management system oodbms was introduced for multimedia purpose what is this multimedia purpose is nothing but uh, when we want to store our audios videos then it will become uh, quite difficult in this manner of storing data so object oriented database management system is used in multimedia purpose for large storage of audios videos and everything and then in 1991 microsoft ships ms access introduced the personal database management system model what is this personal database management system model is nothing but these personal database uh, is stores our personal data in our own system that is local system and without uh, giving permissions or authorization to the second user it will give permission to the user who has the authorization okay in again in 1997 xml was used into the database management system that is in our database management system xml was uh, introduced with uh, that is this uh, extended markup language and these extended markup language will uh, in the form of a schema or in the form of uh, data it is stored in the form of database management system and then in 2000s web based applications and cloud based applications are used along with the database management system so this is all about the quite introduction of the historical perspective and in the next we will see about the uh, notes of this historical perspective don't bother about that so this is the notes about the historical perspective let's see point by point let me help you data is a collection of facts and figures the data collection was increased day to day and they needed to be stored in a device or software which is faster okay this data is a collection of facts and figures that we have discussed in the before point and uh, as the data is increasing as the human population suppose is increasing day by day then the database that is data which is to be stored also increases as the human population increases in this way as the data increases then the need of managing the data or storing the data in our device also increases then database management system has come into play before several decades okay it has started some scientists have planned to start what is this database so we, that um, suppose the scientists have planned to um manage your data or uh, do some scientific cooperation in storing the data for this purpose database management system idea was generated primarily and in 196 before 1960s data is stored in the form of a tree like data structure as we have discussed before this method of storing data was inefficient and difficult to use as it requires lot of efforts and management takes more time uh, so this tree like data structure takes more time and requires lot of efforts which makes it inefficient and difficult to use and then in 1960s first general purpose database management system was designed by charles bachman was called 
the integrated data model IDS which was based on network data model then for which he was awarded with Turing Award. He was awarded with Turing Award for his achievement. And then in 1970s, Mr. Edgar Codd proposed a new data representation framework called the Relational Database Model. Yes, then he won Turing Award in 1981 for this proposal. Then, relational model is a concept based on storing data in the form of rows and columns. This relational data model concept I have already told you that will store the data in the form of a table, tabular format. Suppose like student table, like roll number, name and age section. And these related data will be stored in the form of rows. This is nothing but a data model and this is the this point is saying that this data relational data model uh, relational model is stored in the form of rows and columns and it is more efficient and retrieval model of our dbms that is it is uh, quite simple to implement as well and syntax is quite easy so it is represented as a more efficient and uh, easy process for retrieving the data and in late 1980s, IBM developed the structured query language. Okay. After this, it, uh, it is uh, designed for development of relational database. So, the structured query language is introduced for the uh, development of the relational database as it is a part of the relations. And SQL was later on adopted by the ANSI and ISO. What is this ANSI? American National Standards Institute and ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. That is, is adopted in the sense not in the way you had thinking. It adopted in the sense means used. This American National Institute used this uh, SQL standard uh, structured query language and ISO also used this SQL query language. Adopted in this not in the sense taking or bothering about it. Okay. And then in 1981, several DBMS products were introduced for its development. Okay. Uh, as we have discussed this point before, I'm go not going through the points the, the, which we have already discussed before. I'm going to the points which we have not discussed or we have missed. Okay. In 1990s, object-oriented OODBMS was, was emerged, which is designed to store complex data structures such as multimedia and other types of non-traditional data. And then in 1991, Microsoft ships MS Access, a personal database management system, and displaces all other personal database management system products. And then in 1991, XML applied it to the database processing. Okay. And, uh, as we have gone through all these points, I'm not going through it. And many vendors begin to integrate XML into database management system products. After this invention of the XML integrated into database, many um, users also uh, use this XML into our database. Then in 2000, web-based applications and cloud computing become more popular and DBMS system began to adapt to this new technology. So after the, as in 2000, web-based applications and cloud computing also come into play. Uh, so these databases are also integrated with these two applications as well. And then a new data DBMS system was uh, developed and support distri uh, distributed and web-based applications. These web-based applications are uh, supported by database management systems. These management systems are supposed like MongoDB and Cassandra. And after today, DBMS system continue to evolve with an emphasis on scalability, performance, and support for the cloud-based applications. Okay. Some of the most popular uh, and uh, systems in today include like Oracle, Microsoft SQL services, my MySQL and PostgreSQL and MongoDB. These are some today which will use database management systems are some of these that we use nowadays. And this is about the historical perspective of database management system.
so if you like the video please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel it will make me motivated to make our videos more and please go through the playlist of database management system if you hadn't gone through it and thank you once again